So now let's start refining our relationship notation. Okay, I'm considering the same relationship but three different variations of it. We're saying a student might be assigned a laptop and each laptop might be assigned to a student. Right? When we say might be assigned a laptop, might not be as well. Okay, it's you're saying a, st a student need not necessarily be assigned a laptop, might be assigned a laptop. Some students are assigned, some students are not assigned. But if they're assigned, they're assigned only one laptop. It says a laptop. Okay. And again, it says each laptop might be assigned to a student. Might not be also. Because might be just says it's possible that there are laptops which are not assigned to students. But if a laptop is assigned to a student, it's assigned to at most one student. That's one example. Another scenario is every student is assigned a laptop, is assigned a laptop, must be. There's no question of a student not being assigned a laptop in this example, second example. Every student is assigned a laptop, but each laptop might be assigned to a student, right? That is, every student is definitely given a laptop, but every laptop is not definitely given to a student. Some laptops may exist which are not given to any students, but every student is definitely assigned a laptop. Okay, that's the second variation. And third one, every student must be assigned to a laptop and every laptop must be assigned to a student. Okay, so here we are looking at how each entity must participate in the relationship. Okay, so these are the three variations. The entity relationship diagram, the relationship notation will vary for each of these. Okay, now in the following attributes, we will not be showing uh, following uh, ERDs, we will not be showing attributes. We will only show entity types with just the entity names. This is to avoid confusion. Okay, student might be assigned a laptop, laptop might be assigned to a student. In this case, your entity relationship diagram will look like this. Notice the dashed line. Okay, we will explain this very carefully in the following slides. Okay, for to start with, I just want to show you the three statements and the corresponding entity relationship diagrams, corresponding relationship notation. Then we'll discuss that. The second one we say is every student is assigned a laptop. Laptop, laptop might be assigned to a student. The notation looks like this. Okay, what is the difference between this and this? The difference is, notice that this part of the line is solid. This part of the line is dashed. Okay, why is that? Because it says every student is definitely assigned a laptop. That means students will always get laptops so we put a solid line on the side of student but a laptop might be assigned to a student might not be assigned to a student so we put a dashed line okay we'll discuss this more clearly in the following slides but that's the idea so the line has two parts right you've got a relationship which is connecting two entity types and there's a line that's going between them that line has two parts Half of the line which is close to one entity type and the other half of the line which is close to the other entity type. Okay. Now we have a choice of either making each of these halves solid or dashed. We make a particular half solid if that corresponding entity type has to participate in the relationship. What do we mean by that? Well, student has to have a laptop. There's no question of a student not being connected to a laptop in this business rule. So in that case, if student has to be connected to the other entity type, then we say that's got to be solid. Okay. Whereas in this case, the laptop does not have to be connected to a student. We mean there could be laptops which are not assigned to any student. Then we put a dash line. Okay. So that's this part about participation. So there are two things we have seen about relationships. One is, what's the degree of the relationship? One to one, one to many, many to many. That's one part we have seen. And the second thing we are looking at is whether the line is dashed or solid. And that is really talking about whether an entity has to participate or need not participate. So here, both the entity types have to participate in the relationship. That is, I cannot have a student who's not connected with a laptop. I cannot have a laptop which is not connected to a student. Therefore, both halves of the line are solid. Okay, so this is what I'll be discussing in greater detail in the following slides.
okay so i'm looking at the first example each student must be assigned a laptop each laptop must be assigned to a student okay this allows for a student who has no laptop because it's a student might be assigned a laptop and it also allows for a laptop that is not assigned to a student because a laptop might be assigned to a student does not have to be assigned a student it might be assigned to a student okay this means that each of these entity types need not necessarily participate in the relationship right in other words i'm saying there could be some students who are given laptops and some laptops which are assigned to students that's okay but what this is talking about is is it possible for some student not to have a laptop is it possible for some laptop not to be assigned to a student even if there is one such case then it says okay all students don't have to participate in the relationship so that is called non obligatory or non mandatory participation okay and when an entity type has a non obligatory participation in a relationship we make the line dashed if it has obligatory participation then we make that part of the line solid okay so looking at the diagram the diagram would come out like this as we have already seen okay so neither entity type is obligated to participate in the relationship you may have students who have no laptops you may have laptops which are not given to any students so it is possible for laptops and students some laptops to be connected to some students and it's also possible for some students and laptops not to be connected to each other right so neither entity type is actually obligated to participate in the relationship and therefore both halves of the line are dashed okay so that is what determines whether a line is dashed or solid here we say every student is assigned a laptop but each laptop only might be assigned to a student okay so here what we see is student has obligatory participation meaning every student is given a laptop every student instance is connected to some laptop instance or other whereas every laptop instance might not be connected to a student instance which means this has obligatory participation student laptop does not have obligatory participation and therefore the line comes out like this laptop has does not have obligatory participation so dashed student has obligatory participation therefore solid okay so that is what explains why this diagram looks the way it does now you have to pay very careful attention to all of these diagramming conventions because when you draw a diagram you are writing in a very precise language okay everything in the diagram has a very precise meaning when you draw an entity type it's a rounded rectangle not a circle not a square it's a rounded rectangle okay and the name of the entity type is put in the top of the rectangle you always have to follow that okay so you cannot start drawing uh, you know ovals for entity types or circles for entity types and draw curved lines for relationships no relationship lines are always straight or bent but the bent lines are bent at right angles that's just the convention okay and when you say dashed line it has a precise meaning solid line has a precise meaning when we say entities are named for nouns you have to follow that okay so there's a lot of precision it is the precision of diagrams that gives value otherwise it's of no value whatsoever okay so here we are saying every student is assigned a laptop each laptop must be assigned to a student okay so there both entity types have to participate in the relationship therefore the whole line is solid in other words this half is solid this half is also solid because both of them have to participate okay so let's take this example each student is assigned one dorm room and each dorm room might be assigned to one student okay very carefully draw the entity relationship diagram corresponding to this you don't have to show any attributes just show the entity types with the name but be very careful when you draw the relationship line we pay a lot of attention to which part is solid which part is dashed is the whole thing solid is the whole thing dashed that's up to you but i would say pause the video draw your diagram only then proceed
You can go back and take a look at stuff that we've already discussed, but do it yourself. That's where the learning happens. Okay, so I assume your diagram came out like this because it says every student is assigned a dorm room. So student has obligatory participation. So this is solid. Dom room might be assigned to a student or might not be assigned to a student. So this is dashed. And again, it's a one to one relationship, right? Student is given one dom room. Dom room is given to one student. So it's a one to one relationship. So no crow foot. It's just straight line. Okay. So this is the description as we've already discussed. I hope you got this kind of a diagram. Of course, it doesn't matter whether you put the student on the left and dorm room on the right or dorm room on the left and student on the right. But no matter where you put each one, the dashed line and the solid line have to be in the appropriate place. The dashed line has to be near dorm room. Solid line has to be near student. Another example, each laptop must be assigned to an employee and each employee might be assigned to maintain zero or more laptops okay now this diagram is not actually correct because near the laptop we have to have a crow foot which i seem to have missed out but please take a look at that there should be a crow foot near the uh, near the laptop here because a, a employee might be assigned to more many laptops okay but the solid line and dashed line is what i'm focusing on here uh, but i'll correct this in the slides okay so looking at the example of player and team that we saw earlier what is the degree of the relationship each player can belong to at most how many teams one team each team can have at most how many players n players so it's a one to many relationship right so we are looking at the upper limit for determining the degree of this relationship how about obligatory participation does each player have to belong to a team now we cannot say you know this has to be this way or that way it depends on the actual situation if in a particular situation you can say well there could be players who are not part of any team for example uh, during the draft season or there are some free agents who don't belong to any team at some point in time okay if that can happen at any point in time and you need to keep track of that then you say no players don't have to belong to any team okay does each team have to have at least one player maybe not right maybe the team has just been formed and you want to keep track of the team and they haven't even purchased any players yet it's a new team if you want to keep track of that then you may say no this is also not required that means you're saying in your database you can have players who are not connected to teams and you you can have teams which are not connected to players so both of these entity types have non obligatory participation and therefore the line is going to be fully dashed however a team can have many players therefore there's a crow foot okay you see this crow foot a team can have many players you have a crow foot but a player can belong to maximum of one team so no crow foot on this side okay so what is the connection between ERD and a relational database we've already seen that an entity type in an entity relationship diagram becomes a table in the relational database how about a relationship? What happens to that in a relational database? So we'll discuss that now.